Hello everyone and welcome to Unbound Learners Pre-K. My name is Nina. What's your name? It's nice to meet you. Are you ready to sing our good morning song together? Stretch your arms out like airplane wings. We'll fly to one side, over to the other side, fly back to the middle. Big stretch out in front. Now take that circle up over your head. We'll stretch on this side, over to the other side. One last stretch, and now let's sing together. Good morning, dear earth. Good morning, dear sun. Good morning, dear rocks and flowers, everyone. Good morning, dear beast and birds in the trees. Good morning to you and good morning to me. Good morning, friends. Happy Friday. I hope that you're having a great day so far. We have to do three things before we can move on to the calendar and weather chart. First, let's turn on our listening ears. Next, we have to put on our thinking hats. So you look for your thinking hat. My thinking hat is over here. I'm going to put it on top of my head. Today my thinking hat has some buttons underneath my chin. So I'm going to button those up. And the last thing that we need to do is warm up our hearts. Boom, 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 boom. Now I'm going to get my pointing stick and we can go over the date together. We're going to start off with the month, which is right up here. Do you remember what the month is? October. Today is October 29th. Let's move the chip over from yesterday. Yesterday was October 28th, and today is October 29th, and the year is 2021, but you can also say 2021. So friends, if I look at my, my calendar chart, I only see a few more days left in the month of October. I don't even think we need to stretch out our counting fingers today. We can just start counting to see how many days are left. I'll use my counting stick. You can use your counting finger. And let's count together. After today, we only have one, two. Two more days are left in the month of October. Friends, the next time I see you on Monday, we will have a brand new month up here. Listen to the words in the next song and see if you can hear what month comes after October. January, February, March and April, May and June, July and August, September, October, November, December, 12 months in a year. Did you hear that, friends? The next time I see you on Monday, it won't say October up here anymore. Instead, it will say November. On Monday is November 1st. Let's move on to the Day of the Week song. If you know the words, sing along with me. We're going to hold up seven fingers like this for each one of the days of the week. There are seven days, there are seven days, there are seven days in a week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Down at the bottom of the chart, we have the days of the week to go over together. Listen for the sound that the day starts with, and you can tell me what the day is. This says that yesterday was Thursday. So that means that today is f Friday, the last day of the weekday. And tomorrow will be s Saturday, the first day of the weekend. Let's sing Today is Friday together. It goes like this. Today is Friday, today is Friday, today is Friday, all day long. Today is Friday, today is Friday, today is Friday, all day long. 
up at the top of the chart, we have the season. What season is it, friends? Fall, you're right. You can also say autumn. It's autumn where I live. And down at the bottom of the chart, we have a picture of the weather. So let's sing the weather song together before we share what we see outside of our windows. What's the weather? What's the weather? Can you tell? Can you tell? Is the sun shining? Is the rain falling? Can you tell? Can you tell? So yesterday we got a break from the rain, but it looks like the rain is back today. When I look outside of my window, the sky is gray and cloudy and the raindrops are falling. And my temperature chart is on light blue because it's chilly today. Another chilly and rainy day where I live. What about you, friends? What do you see outside of your window? Thanks for sharing the weather with me. Let's move on to the letter, the number, and the sign of the week. Because today is Friday, it will be the last day talking about this capital letter. Can you tell me the sound that this letter makes? Let's do that together. And what letter is this? K. This is an uppercase K. K says K. I wonder what we'll find inside of the letter box today. I have a picture of something that starts with the letter K. K. I'll give you a few clues and you can take a guess if you know what it is. Here's your first hint. This is a type of an animal that can jump very, very high. And they carry their babies in a pouch on their front. What kind of an animal can jump very high and carries its babies in a pouch on the front? Let's see. This is a kangaroo. So kangaroos are usually found in Australia. They have these large feet and large tails to help them jump very high. And in the front part of their stomachs, they have a pouch. The females can carry their babies in their front pouch. Kangaroo starts with the letter K. -K. This is how you write an uppercase K. -K. One more time. And what about this double digit number? Do you remember what it is? 22. When you write the number 22, you write the number two, two times. Two, two, 22. Let's count to the number 22 together using the large bead frame. This is how you count to the number 22 using the large bead frame. 10, 20, 21, 22. Two tens, two units, 22. We have one more thing to count today inside of the number box. I have a bunch of acorn tops, and as I count them, I'm going to make two rows with 11 acorn tops in each row. Two rows of 11 will make 22 acorns all together. Are you ready to count? One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Halfway done. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, and one more makes twenty-two. 22 acorn tops. 
11 in this row, 11 in the other row, 22. Because today is Friday, it will also be the last day saying hand in sign language. Will you show me how? Let's do that together. Hand. Today we're going to wrap up our sensorial unit. Even though we have five senses, this week we mostly focused on our sense of touch. The work trays have had such different textures. Slimy, puffy, cold, and hard. But we have one final mystery box before we move on to the work tray. Are you ready to guess what's inside? I'm going to use my sense of touch to describe what I feel inside of the mystery box. And you can take a guess if you think you know what it is. All right, so now that my hand is inside of the mystery box, I feel something that is thin. It's about the size of one of my fingers, it seems like. This is hard. I feel some pointy parts and I feel smooth on one side, but when I flip it over, it feels bumpy. Hmm, I wonder what it could be. Do you have any ideas? Let's see what it is. So this is a Lego. A Lego is a small plastic block that you can use to build with. And I see that this side is bumpy, but when I flip it to another side, it's smooth and flat right here. And these pointy parts must have been the edges that I was feeling. Do you like to build with Legos? Before we move on to today's work, we are going to switch from our sense of touch to our sense of sight and smell. So instead of using our hands, which body parts do you think we will need? We're going to use our eyes for our sense of sight and our nose for our sense of smell. Let's go. For today's work, we are going to be making elephant toothpaste. Now, to be honest, I've never done this recipe before, but I'm pretty excited. Earlier this week, we've been using our sense of touch, but today, instead of using our sense of touch, we can use our sense of smell and our sense of sight. So the first thing that you're going to need is an empty bottle. I have this plastic bottle right here. You're going to need a half of a cup of hydrogen peroxide. A funnel is optional. Inside of this cup, I have three tablespoons of warm water and one tablespoon of yeast. Food coloring is optional, and you're also going to need some dish soap. So the first thing that I'm going to do is remove the top from my plastic bottle. And like I said, inside of this cup, I have three tablespoons of warm water and one tablespoon of yeast. And I used this spoon and I mixed it together for about 30 seconds, just until it became this creamy soft consistency like this. And as I was mixing it, I noticed that it had a very strong smell. So I was able to use my sense of smell while I was mixing together the yeast and the warm water. Next, I'm going to take my funnel and I'm going to put it on top of the plastic bottle like this. And I'm going to take the hydrogen peroxide and pour it through the funnel. Then I'm going to add a few squirts of dish soap. I don't need the funnel for this. Just pour a little in. I'm going to mix it up a little bit. And I want to have green elephant toothpaste, so I'm going to also add a few drops of 
green food coloring. You don't have to use food coloring. If you'd like to, you can use whatever color you decide. Mix that all together. All right, let me clear my other materials out of the way. The last thing that I have right here is the yeast and warm water mixture. And I'm going to start to scoop it into the water or into the hydrogen peroxide and just sit back and see what happens. Here we go. I'm getting my finger. Let's see. Give it a little mix. Let it sit. I can see that it's starting to rise up. <gasps> wow, it's happening slowly. It is happening. Give it a little more mix. So usually this recipe can be done with a stronger hydrogen peroxide, but I just used 3% and it seems to still be working. Slowly but surely, I see it rising up. And it looks like it's about to come out of the bottle. Here it comes. Wow. All the way up and over. So I've done a lot of chemical reactions before using either using um, white vinegar and baking soda and have an immediate reaction. But this is different. It's a slow, and steady reaction. And I'm not going to use my hands just because it has a strong substance inside the hydrogen peroxide. But I'm using my sense of sight and I see how it just keeps growing and growing, coming up and out of the bottle. If I were to feel it, I bet that it would feel similar to the soapy foam that we made earlier this week. But for now, I'm just going to sit here and watch as my elephant toothpaste continues to grow and grow. Let's get back to circle time. Welcome back to circle time, friends. Thanks for learning with me today. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Give my video a big thumbs up and find me on OutSchool for my live and interactive classes. You can also support my channel by checking out my Patreon page and gain access to bonus features for your child. I'm also offering one-on-one -on -one tutoring services as well as curriculum consultations, so feel free to reach out for more information. It's time to wave goodbye and sing like this. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. I'll see you next time. Have a great weekend, everyone, and I'll see you back on Monday.